Hello guys, how are we? Oh my god, I feel like I look so strange today. <laughs> like, my hair is so frizzy and I actually just feel like a little bit of a hot mess. So I'm very sorry about that. I'm actually really excited to film today's video. I was initially just going to be doing a testing Pat McGrath because I ordered loads of products on Pat McGrath recently. Quick side note actually, so obviously I am cruelty free and from what I've read, Pat McGrath is cruelty free but there does... There, there wasn't like a lot of information about it online so I'm hoping that Pat McGrath is cruelty free. If anyone wants to give me a bit more insight into that please do. But yeah as I said I was going to be testing just Pat McGrath today but because I've only got four products I think to try I felt like it wasn't really enough to do a full video um, so instead I'm going to be doing like a full face of my most expensive makeup which feels so extra. But I thought it'd be a really fun concept. There's actually another product that I've recently bought and not tried yet, which is this Natasha Denona palette, which was pricey. <laughs> so yeah, I thought we could just have a play with some makeup and, you know, see if these products are worth the money in my opinion. I've gone ahead and done my brows. I started off using the Hourglass Brow Pencil. It looks like this. It's called the Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil and I have this in the shade Dark Brunette. Um, this is expensive. This is like £33, which for a brow pencil is just like a lot. Oh, where did my voice just go? Hello. Yeah, it's expensive. And to be honest, I started doing my right brow with it and I just was not liking it. Like, it's a very chunky brow pencil. I'll show you there. I don't know if you can tell, but it's just very, very chunky. But yeah, I just wasn't feeling that at all. I prefer a brow pencil that's a lot finer. So I used my Fenty brow pencil instead because that is probably my next most expensive brow pencil. And you guys know I love that brow pencil. It is really smooth, really creamy. And um, it's got a really fine point, which is perfect to give like a really defined brow. And then to prime my eyes, I use the Pat McGrath. Um, this is the Skin Fetish Concealer in the shade L6 really like this as a shade it's pretty much my perfect shade obviously i've only tested it on the eyes so far but it was super creamy blended out really nicely the packaging at the packaging on these products is just insane this is the skin fetish sublime Perf perfection setting powder i was trying to read that upside down on the packaging um, but yeah, I got the shade Light 1. And then as I said for eyes, um, this isn't my most expensive palette because I do have two other Natasha Denona palettes um, that were a little bit pricier. But this one is brand new. This is the bronze palette. And I felt like if we were going to test some products out today, I may as well test a new palette as well. So yeah, that is what... It looks like honestly I saw this on Instagram and I actually just died I was like I just had to have it so I ordered it from Natasha Denona like the US site and it came in like two days it was really really quick shipping I think I'm gonna start with the shade suntan which is this shade here so I'm just gonna take that on a Morphe M5 one three and I'm gonna just hold the brush like right at the end and just do like a really loose brush stroke with this and I'm gonna start on the outer corner and then move in a little bit I feel like it's gone so light outside now because I use like partially natural daylight partially studio lights my lighting is sometimes so hard to control because the natural daylight will just take over just gonna concentrate that shade on the outer corner and then really really lightly blend it in I'm barely like touching the skin really as I'm blending it in towards the inner corner because I kind of want the most definition on the outer corner today. I'm just going to use a clean brush to bring it in. I'm going to use that shade to do a really gentle wing shape. And then I'm going to use the shade Beach, I think, which is up here. It's just a lot lighter. And I'm going to take that on the brush that we had no product on and just kind of use that a little bit above. Oh my god, I've just realized that my mic has been muted that whole time. <laughs> so my audio wasn't recording. Oh my gosh, kill me now. Kind of going back and forth between the lighter beach shade and then the darker shade. Also, I feel like I need to get something new because I'm literally 22, like wearing cat ears, like am I okay? No. 
I feel like I need to get some proper clips or anything. I just don't really have anything at the office to like actually pin my hair back. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a slightly smaller brush. This is a Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH40. And I'm gonna use this shade here, which is Magma. So just this kind of like deeper, more like red earth tone shade. And I'm just gonna press that. <sighs> Ooh. That is yummy. Gonna run in it on the lash line and then a little bit up into the crease and then going back in with the slightly lighter shade just to blend that out. I don't know what shade to use on the lid. Like we've got so many different options. I feel like this one is speaking to me the most. This is Silk which is just up there. Oh, that is pretty. I've kind of gone off doing like cut creases and stuff. I don't know if it's just me. I'd rather just have like a bit of like a blown out smoky eye. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of the shade Deep Dive. So these are the two shades that I've just used on the lid. And then I think I'm gonna use this shade here, which it's like a satin, it's not matte. Um, but I think I'm just gonna use that like right on I mean, is it gonna work? I was gonna say right near the lashes, kind of just to like lift the eyes a little bit. So I'm just like pressing it right on the lash line. And then as I get more towards the outer corner, just pressing it more in the crease and kind of like winging it up. I don't really have a set of lashes that are like expensive. The only lashes I really use are these, which are Rodeo Drive Backstage Beauty from Backstage Beauty. Um, they're only like 10 pounds, so they're actually really affordable because I don't wear mink lashes. I guess my lashes are a lot more inexpensive because they're faux mink. Um, and these are literally the best lashes on the planet. Like I say it every single time, but I'm obsessed with them. Um, I'll put my discount code on the screen if you would like to use it. Yeah, I'm gonna pop those on off camera and I'll be right back. Oh my God, does anyone have a day where like their lashes are just being the most difficult thing ever? Like this in a corner is actually testing me. Okay, onto skin. Probably my most expensive moisturizer. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Haven't actually used this in a while either. Charlotte Tilbury in general is a pretty expensive brand. I do like this magic cream, but I don't know. It's probably the sort of thing that I wouldn't repurchase, maybe? I don't know. I mean, it does make your skin look gorgeous. Like, there's no denying. And it feels really good on the skin. Okay, and then at primer, we've got another Pat McGrath product. So this is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection primer even just like the cardboard packaging i'll show you the foundation as well in a second because the foundation especially is just insane um it's just so beautiful i just love the whole vibe like i love the black and gold this is the only primer that pat mcgrath does as far as i'm aware it's basically like a white cream so i'm just going to <laughs> oh my god Oh, what is that smell? Wow, that smells good. So it says it smooths, hydrates, and preps skin for a soft focus blurred effect. Runway tested and mother approved. I love that. Yeah, definitely feels hydrating. Definitely has given a smooth appearance to the skin. It reminds me a lot, which this is really funny because this is the cheapest primer I've ever tested. The Ordinary silicone primer i think it's called it reminds me a lot of that like that is also very hydrating but smooth in so that could be a dupe for this maybe it's like four pounds it's so so cheap okay and then the foundation this packaging like i just die it's so high quality and just like well thought out this is the skin fetish sublime perfection foundation so i got the shade light medium 14 which i'm hoping is right it's so hard to pick a shade when it's online like it's just impossible but it says it's a buildable perfecting coverage weightless texture sublime satin finish runway tested and mother approved again universal formula for all skin types oil free paraben free fragrance free we're gonna give this a go this is probably like the bougiest foundation I've ever owned if I'm gonna be completely honest. Oh, it's very liquidy, like look at that. Whoop, very liquidy. It looks like a good shade match actually. Do you know what, I am getting better and better at like picking my shades online, thank the Lord. Mm. 
it's maybe a little bit too yellow for me but we'll make it work okay so a little goes a very long way and it's actually giving more coverage than I expected it to give. Runny foundations are always like so 50-50, I think, because something that's really liquidy, I just always assume that it's gonna be really, really sheer on the skin, and it either usually is really sheer or it's like this and it's quite, quite decent coverage. Because I mean, that is like pretty full coverage, like straight off. And I'm using a sponge as well, which you would think with a sponge, you would get a lot less coverage. I'm actually shocked at how good that looks. That could potentially be like my new favorite foundation because I am honestly, just how easily that blended in. Even on my neck, I find it so hard to apply foundation to my neck. I find that it just, it just kind of clings to certain patches. My neck's quite dry and I find that it just doesn't apply properly, but that is just applied so easily and so well. What are we thinking? It's very glowy, which I love. I thought it was gonna be a lot more natural than that. That's kind of like the vibe that I got from that foundation and kind of what I've seen other people say about it as well. So I really wasn't expecting it to be that flawless that quickly. Like I've not had to build it up or anything. It's literally just been like, doop, 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 done. Okay, cream bronzer wise, my most expensive cream bronzer is probably my Fenty, which is in the shade Macchiato. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of this because the foundation already is very warm. Um, but to be honest, I kind of like to use cream bronzer because I don't like to pack on a lot of powder bronzer. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit just so that I don't have to use as much powder. Quite dry this um, cream contour. That's the one thing I find with it. I feel like I need to drop a bit of oil or something into it because it dries up so quickly. Okay, so concealer. This is, as I said, the Sublime, um, what is this? Skin Fetish Concealer in the shade L6. I really like the applicator for this. It's like a really small, but like wide doe foot that's like super flexible. Like if I was ever to make makeup, I would 100% make applicators like this and make them like soft, wide, flexible. Um, I just find them really like soothing on the skin. I mean, that is like some serious coverage. I probably didn't need that much. I always forget when it's like a concealer that I've not really used before, that you should probably start with like a lot less than what you usually would. <laughs> but this is why I don't put any on the rest of my skin either, because then I can use whatever's left over on the sponge and I can kind of just like tap that in other places just to like brighten the rest of the skin plus we've not set it down yet and concealer always goes a little bit darker once you set it down i mean it kind of depends on what powder that you're using but most loose powders will kind of dull the brightness of a concealer all right moment of truth is powder like powder for me is make or break for your whole makeup here we go just gonna take about that much and I always go from the outside like the outer corner in just to help prevent any extra crease in oh my gosh how have I not tried these products sooner like oh my god okay I don't know why it's done that and you might not even see on camera but it's really highlighted like just where my dark circle is, not right at the lash line or like beneath, just this circle. Like it's really highlighted it in a really weird way. Bronzer wise, we've got the Hourglass Ambient Bronze Light. This is like 40 pounds, I wanna say. It's expensive, um, but it is a really, really good bronzer. So I'm just going to kind of dust that around the skin. I like the fact as well, it has a little bit of like a glow to it, like a really, really subtle amount of glow to it because matte bronzers can be quite um, powdery, I guess you would say. And like, they can just cling a lot. Whereas this just always looks really, really good. And then for highlighter, I couldn't really think of anything that was like so expensive and extra. The only thing I can really think of is my Fenty highlighter in Mean Money and Hustler Baby. So that is what I'm gonna use. Oh, I'm just gonna use this on. Oh, 
this highlighter just kills me like it's so beautiful it's actually a joke oh bitch like this makeup this makeup oh my god like i actually don't even have words for how this makeup is making me feel right now like that is how obsessed i am with it i always connect my nose contour like it's so important to do that just to get that little bit there it makes like the biggest difference ever and then for blush i've picked out this charlotte tilbury blush in the shade cheek to chic <laughs> charlotte tilbury of course is quite a high-end brand so this is pretty much like all i could really think of in terms of like an expensive blush and i really like the tone of this it's just like a really nice like warm pinky shade like it just kind of gives your cheeks like a natural blush I feel like everyone is enjoying doing like blush on the nose now that it's summertime. Okay, and then I'm gonna finish off the eyes very quickly, just using a little bit of kind of all the matte shades. Sorry, I've got a really itch, really bad itch there. <laughs> I don't really wanna do anything too heavy under the eyes because I'm really enjoying having like basically nothing on my under eye at the minute. So I'm just gonna kind of like dust a little bit of shadow so that there's something there, but it's not crazy. All we have left to do is lips. So for lips, I've picked out a Charlotte Tilbury lip combo. It's probably my most expensive. They're probably my most expensive lip products, I guess. So we've got the Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat in the shade Pillow Talk. Um, and then we've also got the Pillow Talk lipstick as well. So I'm just gonna pop these on now. Okay, so this is the finished look. I have to say, this is probably my favorite makeup look I've ever done, like full stop. Best believe like I am gonna be wearing these products many times like i feel like this is gonna be like my first night out makeup yeah i really hope you guys like this makeup let me know if you have any of these products down below um or if there's anything that you would like to test out and please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it because i would really really appreciate that um i'm gonna get going anyway because rach and mads are supposed to be here by now and i'm the one running late and i actually hate being that bitch that's running late so yeah i love you guys as always and i will see you in the next one